Okay, back to Dr. Darman again. I'm going to just go right to the meat and potatoes here. I see people sneezing, wheezing. Some of them say, I've got a cold. Some of them say, this darn pollen is driving me nuts. What is it? Well, we're about two-thirds of the way through the tree pollen season. And it has been um, an unusual level of exposure. It's been high. It has had a lot to do with the winter ending early, uh, some of that early spring. Uh, Indian spring or whatever it's called back in February yep. when the evergreens began to pollinate and then we had a period of rain but the evergreens were pretty much through at the time then the oaks kicked in and they are just about finished up now if you notice the little brown tassels is yep. where the pollen comes from and they're starting to drop those from the trees now so that's pretty much over uh, the next tree to pollinate major tree is going to be the pecans and if you look at the pecan trees, you'll see that they're starting to bud out the little green buds and the green tassels, clumps of tassels, have started to show up before long. Uh, ironically, that's um, about on time. Normally, that starts about mid-April. Um, pets. Uh, a lot of people have animals in their homes. And uh, uh, maybe you never had a dog in the house or a cat in the house. All of a sudden, you've got a cat in the house and you're breaking out in hives on your hands or you're itching, scratching, or maybe sneezing a little bit. Typical? Well, pets contribute in three specific ways. One is they get pollen in their coats and they can haul it into the house. Okay. The second is the hair and skin and saliva that they shed is an allergen source if people are allergic to cat allergen or dog allergen, whatever it is. Thirdly, the hair and skin that they shed is a food source for the house dust mites, which is the major allergen in a house dust. And so even if you're not allergic to cat or dog dander, you can, and, and you are allergic to house dust, and really I've never seen anybody who was truly allergic that was not allergic to house dust mites, then you can have trouble simply as a result of that. Uh, urban legend, Chihuahua dogs will keep you from having asthma. Is there any? No, there's no truth to that. No truth. Probably the reason that people have noticed that is they had long-haired dogs and they replaced them with ch chihuahuas, which are short or virtually no-haired dogs. Yeah. And so the amount of allergen that was being shed diminished yeah. and they got better. They got better. Let's talk about visiting you and getting to feel better because there is life beyond allergies. Oh, yes. It's a very and, manageable problem. And there's a good full life beyond allergies, too. Sure. Uh, first thing they do, of course, is call the number on the screen, set up an appointment. Call the office. And, and typically, what might they expect when they come in the first time? Well, the first visit is always our longest visit. There's a lot to find out about what's going on. We go uh, through a very in-depth uh, history of the specific problem and uh, the patient's health and their family history to try to get an understanding of what's going on. We begin the process that day of bringing the active problem under control. And then once the problem is stabilized, we begin the process of shifting into trying to prevent it from being as much of a problem, to keep them healthy, to keep them feeling normal. So you go through stages, but that first visit is a longer visit because so much information has to be gathered. You boost that immune system by treating it, is that right? Well, there are three basic ways to treat allergic disorders. One is to avoid or reduce exposure if it's avoidable. The second is to take medications, and the inherent problem with medications is that they don't change the condition, they don't change the functioning of the immune system, and that's what's wrong here. They just reduce the intensity of the symptoms. That has its place, but that's never going to take anybody to being healthy and normal and non-allergic. The third option is called immunotherapy, which does change the functioning of the immune system for people with respiratory allergies. It does not work for food allergies. Okay but it will make a big difference in people who have respiratory allergies. Food allergies is in the avoidance category. You can stay away from those sure. if you know what they are. Sure. So Doc, all they need to do is call you and get in here and uh, let you get them on the road to having a better life so they can enjoy the outdoors in this wonderful spring weather. That's right. Uh, and again, what days week are you normally open? Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And uh, just call us out, folks. You're going to like them. Dr. Dormy will see you. No waiting around in here. He'll get you in quick and get you out quick. We respect people's time. <laughs>
Yeah, and, and listen, uh, have a good spring. Uh, what you been doing? You've been riding your motorcycle some and doing some other things, or you just kind of yeah, a little bit and a trip here and there. Yeah, well, always good to see you, and it's good uh, to see you. thanks for the good information.